Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. No matter at what time you're watching this, uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, my name is Czech. I'm actually the digital um, cyber security specialist for Sweden and Denmark. Uh, and I'm here with my two colleagues, uh, Petteri and Elvis. So, Petteri, I'm letting you introduce yourself if you want. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I think it's good to catch up and uh, have a nice chat around what we've been up to during this these times. So, uh, but yeah, a little bit about myself. I've been working in IBM for the past uh, almost six years and uh, mainly around security. So my my kind of area now is the uh, the whole security portfolio uh, for Nordic. So uh, Finland and, and Norway more specifically. I'll hand it over to you, Ergis. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Peter. And uh, thanks, Shek, for um, for in inviting me to one of these sessions. And it's absolutely an honor. And um, we've been working with Peter for a few webinars before, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, for some of you who don't know me, I, um, I've worked in the German on the DAC market uh, for the last three years. And I've recently changed position to a, a CSM, a digital CSM. So I'm, I'm managing a, a set of clients um, in the cloud portfolio for the IBM. Um, luckily, right now the kids are just gone off, and uh, they're not going to make any mess. So I hope we can we'll have a, a you know a relaxed and pleasant um, introduction towards um, towards our um, video. Absolutely, and thank you very much, guys, for this introduction. So I guess the goal of this video uh, originally was to sort of do a kind of therapy all together because the world has changed so dramatically lately, and everything has become a little bit mad, to be honest. Uh, in terms of the world that is around us, like so many things have changed, so many things have become completely different, and I think that's good to sort of express ourselves and uh, to sort of share uh, the experience that we all have together in this uh, actually crisis that is quite uh, massive and quite uh, sort of moving in terms of all of the changes that happened. And I encourage actually everybody and anybody to sort of do it because you know it's important to talk the interaction that we have with people is not the same as before unfortunately we cannot like see each other as often as we want to see each other uh, even friends and even people that are really close to you uh, you cannot really go to see them because of this situation fortunately uh, the lockdown uh, is sort of easing up in different countries in europe now uh, so hopefully step by step uh, we'll be able to interact again with each other uh, but it's definitely never going to be in the same way. Uh, shaking hands, probably like kissing each other, for example, for people that you that are not really close to you. This kind of stuff are over. And I think that's what really shocked me the most. And that's probably one of the first uh, points that really moved me and struck me in terms of this crisis, because the interaction with people will never be the same again. Uh, Sometimes I'm just walking down the street and I see like people literally changing side of the road where they are working at uh, just because of the fear of, you know, being contaminated. And that's something that is, you know, like quite surprising for me and maybe, maybe a little bit scary as well, because the interaction with people will never be the same again. And maybe the other thing that really strikes me is the fact that because you're working where you're actually living, maybe you spend more quality time with your family. And that's something positive, I believe, uh, because you are able to see your children, you are able to see your wife, you are able actually to do some activities with them at the same time of working. And I think that's something positive that you can take uh, sort of out of this situation with coronavirus. Uh, maybe how about you, Ergis? How do you feel the situation and how do you feel about the situation with coronavirus? Well, <clears throat> um... Being stuck in a in a small environment with with these little devils that I have, it's not an easy task. I they hang around the fridge all day long. They think that the fridge is a personal thing to do. They they figured out how to open it, put locks on it. It's it's definitely, definitely, definitely not easy. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing the Hello Kitty hats, and I had to exchange that with some lollipops. So if they interrupt us well my, my apologies but it's managing the workload has been extremely difficult uh, but as you mentioned it has brought you 
together to your family. It has given you more possibility of seeing uh, the daily routine of what's happening, what's not happening. You know, it's it's a plus and a minus at the same time, more of a minus because, you know, you you want to achieve the greater for your clients and want to that, but at the same time, you do relate with them and they have the same issue as well when you when you talk to them. But I'm sure Peter has a different uh, different approach to this. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I guess uh, I don't have the same situation. I don't have uh, little bundles of joy uh, with me here. Just have to have to find the joy from, uh, you know, our, you know, myself and my wife together. So I guess, uh, yes, that, that that's also a challenge. Like um, it's it's every day kind of starts to blend in uh, into something similar. Like days come just like. A, one one big tunnel and uh, i don't know it, it it is it is interesting times I have to say and uh, i guess for me the routine has been the the savior kind of you wake up certain time you be you know you you set up your own kind of workstation and uh, in that sense kind of simulate what we used to have and i do agree what uh, what uh, both of you said and uh, what uh share started with uh, uh, saying that uh, it will never be the same again, and and some parts I think it's good that it's it's not going to be the same again because uh, we've been doing things uh, the same way uh, in workplaces for a long time, and some things uh, you know like uh, you know there's this uh, kind of like a saying where where you know like you can be you can be you can be smart, but uh, if you're really wise. Uh, you don't even have to do the things that the smart people is is uh, able to figure out. So if you're wise enough, you you find a way to disregard the uh, the tasks that are not non essential. So um, or can be can be solved with uh, with with you know just reorganizing or even technology. Maybe there's a simple tool out there that does it does it more efficiently. I just think that you know it's it's really like a, a time to kind of reflect. Uh, on what 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 we've been doing, uh, you know, in the past, and what can we do differently? Yeah, that's my my view. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And thanks very much, guys, for sharing all of that. Uh, I believe that the link that we can make between all of that, it's we have changed completely our behavior. And another positive stuff to take out of all of this, it's actually that the health and the well-being became more important than anything else. And that's something quite important in our world and in the afterworld after the crisis that we are facing right now. Uh, basically, all what's happening right now, regardless of the impact of uh, the economy, the impact on financial uh, situation, uh, regardless of how it's going to change our society, the priority is to stay safe and to stay healthy. And I think that's something really important and really keen uh, to sort of look at. And when we think about that, when we think of our digital world as well and how it looks like, all of the stuff that we do in, on a daily basis are digital. Everything is relying on digital sort of assets, on digital framework. And it's really important and really key, I would say, to see the importance of securing this kind of digital framework. But maybe, first of all, we can sort of have a discussion on how a digital framework and how an IT ecosystem can look like nowadays. And probably Ergis, with your level of expertise, will be uh, the most likely to sort of elaborate on that and to explain how it's working uh, in, the modern day, in the modern days that we have right now. Well, as you can see, they they broke the curfew and they just came back in. So my, uh, my sincere apologies, guys. And it's simple as it starts with an infrastructure, an infrastructure service, and then it goes to networking. Then you you need an OS, then you need managing tools, then you need um, basings of uh, monitoring, and then once you have once you have all that, you you have to think, okay, what else do I need? What about patching? What about testing? Then it goes to um, backup. What sort of backup do I have? Do I have an, uh, what's the architecture and design behind it? Do I have a 24 seven, um, a secure environment? Do I have somebody 
is it is a GDPR compliant? So all of this with the cloud, there is it's a self-managed IT or a managed IT infrastructure. So it, it's it's very complex. It's, yeah. You know. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense. That makes that make a lot of sense what you said. So basically, what do you see in terms of trends? Uh, for example, like before and at the beginning of the digital world that we are living in right now, we used to have like a lot of on-premise infrastructure versus very little uh, cloud infrastructure, let's say. Yeah. How does it look like in the modern world and how do you see the IT infrastructure set up uh, in the way that we are living right now? Okay. Um, with that said, it goes to who is essential and who is not essential. So essential is the ones who maintain the service line on these servers, making sure that all of the operation in the background are running, are smoothly going, are, um, the capacity is up there, the demand of the clients is, is number one, and that there is no downtime. The one thing right now that everybody is concerned is about downtime. Yeah. You know, not naming names of, of uh, other competitors or anything like that, but like there has been some, how do you call it, a volume, a high striking volume of, of um, internet usage for different companies and some of them just crashed. They didn't have the capacity to m maintain or handle the whole situation. Yeah. And, you know, for that one second or one moment or one, one minute or uh, it doesn't matter, all that traffic, all everything, it, it all crashed. For some clients, it, it, it would be devastating because they cannot go, they cannot reach and they don't have the support. Well, that makes sense. No. And, how, and, how, and how reliable do you think that the cloud infrastructure is for example, 15 years down the line or 20 years ago? It, that's a very difficult question. I think it has, a, it has a whole topic in itself because cloud is evolving all the time and it's constantly, constantly moving uh, to different, uh, different environments. And, you know, we've, seen, we've never seen cloud packs before and we have them now. And I'm sure Peter is going to give us a nice, um, nice um, a briefing about the security part of it as well. And it's really interesting to understand, you know, your whole infrastructure, getting it as a bundle, and then instead of instead of separating all the little blocks and chains and and what you need and whatnot, and getting a a whole how do you call it a whole um, a whole bundle of 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 uh, of stack in it, and it manages everything itself. Right, that makes sense. It's, it's, yeah. That makes sense. And would you say that, for example, because you said that downtime is a big topic and a big issue for most of the customers that you're talking to, would you say to make sure that the efficiency stays uh, as long as the customer is using this kind of solution? Absolutely. Exactly what um, is Standing up at the first, it has to be with the clients. You, it's like making a demo. You can, you can present the product. You can talk about the product. You can talk about the nicks and nuts. You can talk about all the little bits and pieces and everything else. But really, what is the whole point of the whole demo? It's coming across. Mm -hmm. Being understandable. Is that going to change for you? So for some clients, cloud packs wouldn't be essential. For some big companies, yes, absolutely. Yeah. For some of them, small SMBs. Um, they have no need. They just need a, a nice, structured, secure, 24-7 environment on the cloud that runs smoothly without any downtime and with the insurance of GTBR compliances as well. And that is the main, main priority right now. For sure. And you know, like, what really gave me the feeling to sort of do this kind of video is the fact that our digital world is behaving exactly in the same way than a human body, for example. And when you see that IT infrastructure with their complexity, uh, with the way that is built between the cloud and the on-premise appliances, uh, it's working exactly like organs and like a human body with a brain, with different organs as well at the same time related to the brain. And CloudPack is actually the brain of it and helping you to sort of seeing everything at the same time and having the eyes on every single organ that you have in your company and that's really interesting however all human body needs an, an immune system as well and the immune system it's 
the most important thing uh, out of the body. Why? Because without immune system, you cannot fight the external threat. You cannot fight the viruses. You cannot fight anything that is actually coming into your body to sort of damage it. And that's why I wanted to have the expertise of Petteri at the same time on that and to sort of understand, uh, you know, what cloud pack for security can do to help us to protect the immunity of our IT ecosystems. Yeah, no, I, I like the analogy and, uh, and like, uh, if I pick up something there, let's say the viruses, for example, obviously, uh, the body doesn't have uh, the capabilities to, to outright kill it, but uh, if you have a good, uh, you know, overall uh, immunity, it can help to, you know, fight the symptoms and then eventually uh, recover uh, from the virus. But uh, obviously, you know, the only way to, to, to become uh, completely uh, kind of like immune against it is to, is to uh, either have a vaccine or, 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 you know, in some cases of the viruses, you would have to suffer from it and then not be able to get it again. But I think there are many out there. And I guess the one that we're suffering from now globally is, is one of them that it's not necessarily the truth that, uh, but anyways, if I tie it down to, to the, uh, security of it infrastructure, I think the most important thing is to have an overview of everything that you already have in your environment. So it could be that you have, like uh, Ergis mentioned, it really depends on the customer. One customer might only have an on-premise uh, environment, but still nowadays it is connected. Uh, it's connected because uh, you know you need to be able to access it. So you would have network firewalls, you would have routers and uh, switches that you, you have data traffic in and out all the time. So uh, you will get data there and there is still a threat that uh, something infects that environment. Yeah, many companies have a hybrid environment. So, uh, you know, in that, in that case, uh, you would have the you know, kind of security. Have, let's say some of the workloads in, in public clouds, or you're, you've gone full on cloud. You, you were born in cloud. Let's say many companies nowadays are fully, uh, you know, just, you know, using cloud services in the ease of use, you know, the, the, there's no upfront costs. You just pay it as you, as you go and what you use. Uh, but the main thing with the, what we're talking about here, the, 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 uh, let's say the answer to, to these different environments is the cloud practice security where basically regardless of what you have and how complex your environment is, you can, you can pull the information from, let's say you have two different providers for cloud. Let's say you have uh, Microsoft and IBM cloud they use, both of them have their own security tools. So if you want to, you know, monitor everything, there's already two different tools you have to go through. Let's say you have endpoint protection, you have a, a security incident and event management tool, all of those different tools you have to kind of, you know, monitor yourself, but uh, cloud backup security automates that. So you can pull that information and you can have one single pane of glass over them to, to view what's happening there. And then, uh, if something is happening there, which eventually will have, will you know, be the case, uh, then you can react with the tools that's provided for you. So there's already automated actions you can do to stop the threats or prevent them from happening again, restrict some users' accesses, and so forth. So it's kind of a, you know, it, it works on Red Hat OpenShift. So it doesn't matter what the environment is built on; you can you can implement it. And I think that's the that's the kind of a key. You get over overview over everything. And uh, if we had something like that now uh, in the world for what we're suffering uh, globally, I think that would help a lot. So we would have a uniform approach to reacting to different types of threat because you know it's a complex world out there. But for IT environment now, now it's possible already. Yeah, definitely. And I think. In the light of what you just said, I'm just putting myself in the shoes of our customers or our potential customers, let's say. Uh, every company has different priorities. Everybody, every company can have like a different strategy in terms of security. How CloudPack would fit the need of each and every single different companies according to their security requirements? It, it, 
it really is like I like I described it. Uh, once you utilize uh, the tools inside, uh, you can get uh, overview of all of your environment. That is, it, it, let's say on a, on a average company, you have at least half a dozen different uh, sources uh, and different kind of silos in your own environment. Uh, you could call that. Uh, it kind of breaks down the silos uh, for you to get the info out of it. Let's say you have two different clouds you're using. Uh, let's say you have se several different uh, uh, protection methods for different uh, um, endpoints and servers and uh, and so forth. You already have some security tool, but who's going to manage that? Well, what if you can make it a bit easier for yourself and actually get the relevant info out? And then when you want to do something about it, you also have the tools already set up there. And you can also configure your own uh, rules there that respond to these threats. So I think it's just making life a little bit easier. Uh, it's kind of like at the start of all this. I, I noticed that uh, a lot of companies were struggling. They would pull it together somehow because they had to. But it's the same thing in many companies with the security. You pull something together because you have to have something. Whether it's compliance, whether it's GDPR, like I just mentioned, that's a big thing in the last few years. You have to pull it together. But is it really manageable? And who's managing it now? How much more efficient can it be? Uh, these are the questions that we can we can answer with the cloud pack for security and the other cloud packs. Obviously, there's other cloud packs out there, but for the security that we know, uh, that's what it does. Simply. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense what you said, and I guess. Uh, the thing that I understand according to all what you said, it's basically no matter where you start in terms of cloud or, or in terms of, you know, security, uh, the most important thing to know of it's uh, you need to take some action and you need to take some measure to know what's going on in your IT infrastructure and to have a sort of overview of the security breaches that you might have because there's no company out there who doesn't have any security breaches. Even the biggest companies in the world have that. And even if you're a small company with really small uh, sort of asset in terms of IT infrastructure, you will have confidential data. IT infrastructure it can be any financial tool, it can be any personal information about uh, your employees and your customers. And all of that needs to be sort of secured, assessed, and protected in the best way possible. And of course, if you have a lot of things on premise related to what Ergis was mentioning at the beginning, uh, the sort of cost efficiency side of things and the sort of, you know, trend that the market is taking is to basically move the stuff from on premise to cloud in a secure way. And IBM can help you to do that. And I think that's really important to emphasize that. And also the other thing that I'm taking into consideration according to the presentation that you guys have done and have said to me, as I know that each and every single customer can be different, we need to have a conversation in terms of what is actually needed in the company on a personalized, on a customized as well uh, basis. So basically, we are here acting like some kind of counselor or psychotherapist, let's say, uh, because if we talk to a company and if we talk to any person who is sort of uh, concerned or like having a look in the IT security and the IT infrastructure side of things, because of the use cases that we have and because of the expertise that we have with many different companies across the world, we'll be able to give the best advice and we'll be able to direct in the best way. And sometimes it's not too much of a financial interaction straight away and us sort of promoting the solution that we have versus a customer who is going to buy straight away. Sometimes it's all about interaction and discussing and understanding uh, the IT environment of the customer and assessing the best way that we can protect the assets uh, to have a bright future ahead. And I think that's the most important thing out of all of that. So thank you very much, both of you, for sharing all of that. My pleasure. My pleasure. It's a good no start for our first, I think it's a good start for our first episode. Uh, I wish that we introduce the different solutions and the different perspective that we have for our customers and hopefully after we can engage the conversation uh, with as many people as possible uh, to sort of make the future brighter and make sure that uh, as we protect our health and as we protect as well 
our well-being. We protect as well the IT and the digital world uh, that we have out there. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for your time today. Absolutely. Uh, sure. You take care, and we'll talk really soon. Nice. Thanks, guys. Okay. Take care.